right now as I speak. And my good friend, Casey Joyner, he follows me from the East Coast to the West Coast. This guy is an incredible demand, footballscientist.com. He works for The Athletic. He works for the uh, fantasy football diehards. He works in, in Philly. He, he's all over the place. And he's going to join us each and every Thursday during the football season at 345. So at this time, but on Thursdays during the football season, KC, glad that you could join us for another football season. I love having you on. I know you just updated your draft guide this morning, so you get all sorts of information for us. Let me start with uh, Trey Lance, KC. A lot of people in this area talking about Trey Lance. Your thoughts on him as a QB1 in fantasy this year? I like the upset for Trey Lance because when you get a rushing quarterback, a really good rushing quarterback, like last year the top rushing quarterbacks will post anywhere from seven to nine fantasy points per game. If you get seven or eight points on the ground per game, to be a good fantasy starter, you need to put up 17 points. So, all right, you're only going to need eight to ten points in the passing game to be a QB1, and I think uh, Trey Lance could even top uh, the nine-point level. So, I like him from that perspective. I am concerned about the throwing ability, and he had some issues last year in a metric. I have a good blocking arch per attempt. It just means how productive we are when you get good blocking. So there are some upside elements that he has there, and the quarterback position is really deep this year. So I got him as 15 overall, but you could easily talk me into uh, saying, it, say, a number 12 pick, or if you said you'd stack him with somebody else and said, hey, I'm going to go really uh, low cost on quarterback and play for upside, I, I would be okay with that strategy. So you got him at 15. I've seen people have him as high as like 10, 11, 12. You got him at 15. Uh, let's talk about his teammate, Brandon Ayuk. A lot of writing about this tag team combination, not as much as Debo Samuel. You know, you, you look at Debo, we feel good about Debo, but Ayuk, his potential, KC, after, you know, lots of preseason talk here on the left coast about how good he's looked. Yeah, Ayuk is, uh, it, it's when you're in a run first offense, the thing is, how many. How many targets is somebody going to get in a run first offense? And you know that Samuel's going to get a lot, and you know that Kittle's going to get a lot, and there's going to be some available. But I'm seeing Ayuk as a guy who's probably going to get 100 to 120 targets. So I do these grades in my in my draft guide where I do uh, overall upside and downside grades, and I do them by color coding too. What you're looking for on this is you either want a blue-rated player, that's an elite player, or somebody with green-rated a green rating, which is a solid starter. I've got Ayuka's yellow rating for an overall grade, which means he's a solid, you know, he's, he's kind of a backup there, but he's got green rated upside grades. You can get him around nine or 10. I like having those sorts of players where you can get somebody that late, probably as a wide receiver for maybe a five in your roster, and you've got the potential for starter caliber upside. I really like stocking those players later in drafts. KC Joiner from the uh, footballscientist.com joining Cattles and Rami here on Sacktown Sports. Just Cattles, no Rami on this Friday. Uh, is there a San Francisco running back, KC, that you would trust on your team this year? It's tough. I've got Mitchell right now rated 30th on my PPR sheet, and I like him. He's got close to blue rated upside. I like him. I like where they are. It was their run blocking. Actually, their offensive line adjustments, you wouldn't think that they would be helpful, but actually uh, they didn't get very good blocking out of Mac last year. I graded the 49ers run blockers, and he actually did not grade out that well despite the Pro Bowl burst. So at least in the ground game, he didn't. So I think they'll be fine from a blocking perspective, but there's that the thing of that Kyle Shanahan running backs that he doesn't have back-to-back -back running backs on his roster or hasn't had a leading of back back running backs since I think it was 2016. So there's a concern about that. But what I always tell people is if you're getting a running back, you always got to have a, if you have a starting running back, you've got to have a backup. You know, you're going to have to have backup running back center. But you can't just have two or three stars, no backups. If you're going to have backups, go ahead and have backups to the guys who are already in your roster. So I don't have a problem saying I'd get Mitchell, might get Sermon, might get, um, you know, Wilson is a third. I mean, I might be able to stock a roster depending on how deep the roster is and say, hey, I don't mind having a couple of three running backs. And yeah, if Shanahan changes his mind, fine. I'll change my mind as a fantasy manager too. We talked about Trey Lance already. When you look at the second year quarterbacks, Casey, aside from Lance, who are you most comfortable taking and why? Um, second year quarterbacks, boy, that's, uh, I'm, you know, I'm looking at Justin Fields. The Bears' offense is better than people give it credit for. Their run blocking it was very good last year. I'm a big David Montgomery fan this year. In fact, I'm getting a lot of pushback from, you're Montgomery, I can't believe you do that. Like, <laughs> God, they have the most favorite schedule in the league. Come on, run defense schedule-wise. Fields will be able to run with that behind that line. 
He'll be able to scramble. He scrambles a ton. And I just like where they're going to be in the, in the receiving core. Again, if you get a good amount of production in the ground game, you don't need a great amount of production in the passing game. So I'm, I'm high on him at, at 18 at quarterback right now. You could argue me into going a little bit higher than that, depending if things go well. When should the first quarterback come off the board, and who is that quarterback? The first quarterback coming off boards is usually Josh Allen. He's number one on my charts. He gets 100 across the board grades. The problem with Josh Allen is he's finished first in quarterback points in back-to-back seasons, first quarterback to do that since Dante Culpepper in 2003-2004, but only two quarterbacks have done that three years in a row since the NFL merger, Brett Favre, Steve Young. Wow. I think, yeah, it just doesn't happen. Buffalo showed late last year they like to run the ball more. I don't mean a lot more, but just more than they have. They've got a lot of backs now. I think they lean a bit more on the ground game than they have because they're tired of getting into those shootouts. They're losing enough of them. They were like, look, we don't want to get into shootout games. We want to be able to slow things down. So I don't like him in the second round just because I think he's a great quarterback, but I think the price is too high, especially since he had 11 quarterbacks last year score 300 or more fantasy points. That's two years in a row that's happened. That's par for the course. He's going to give you more than that, but I like Herbert more as a pick in the second round. Even Murray, he's going in the fifth round in some picks, and he He's third on my draft board. He's a guy I'd go and say, okay, I'll take him in the fifth. Otherwise, I'm waiting and waiting on quarterback until I can get him at the lowest price possible. KC Joiner, football scientist.com, athletic fantasy football diehards with us. Just updated his draft guide this morning. Which quarterback is not getting enough attention, KC? Uh, which is not getting enough attention? I would, deck, uh, Dak Prescott. I am big on Dak Prescott. Last year, he had the, uh, the he'd come back from the injury and he, he was tentative in his running. I don't think he ran as much as he could if he was healthy. And we see that happen with injuries that the first year back, you're still battling some rust. And he was great in, in passing. I think it was third in passing points per game among quarterbacks last year. And if you look at it on a depth level, short, medium, deep, all that, he did great on all those levels. And I think he'll bring his rushing production back up. And I don't think that's being baked into his fantasy, uh, his fantasy value because you can get him sometimes as late as the seventh round. I think he'll be a, a number five quarterback overall. Jalen Hurts is a similar boat where he's going to give you a lot of ton of uh, rushing production. And I think he's going later than he should be. He's usually on the last things about sixth round. Let's do some rapid fire. Top five running backs. Top five running backs. That's going to be Jonathan Taylor, Derek Henry, Christian McCaffrey, Joe Mixon just lowered Najee Harris a bit because uh, he's probably going to get a little bit fewer carries, but I still like him as a fifth back. Mm, wow. Christian McCaffrey still, still love him, huh? Top five wide receivers, Casey. <laughs> Top five wide receivers. This time, let's go PPR on this one. Cup, Jefferson, Chase, Adams, and Lamb. On Cup, he's not going to repeat what he did last year. Just keep that in mind. He had Jerry Rice elite caliber season numbers last year and Rice never did that again. So Cup is good, but I don't think he's going to quite repeat what he did last year. The guy you wouldn't pick too early. The guy I wouldn't pick too early mentioned Josh Allen. He probably on the list. Patrick Mahomes too. They're going to go run heavy in Kansas City and people are thinking he's going to be this number two quarterback, you know, top quarterback. Huh? Uh-uh. He's going to be a top five quarterback. He's not going to be one. You're the man. Football season Thursdays, 345 with us, Pacific time. Don't forget that, KC. Don't don't be don't be looking for the phone call at 1245, all right? But we're not gonna do it that time. Uh, Thursdays at 345 Pacific Time, football scientist.com, the athletic fantasy football diehards. Uh check out his website, check out his pay dirt service. It's fantastic stuff. Uh we'll talk to you week one, KC. Can't wait, man. Sounds great. Also, if people use the discount code Nick, they get 10% off of that paid subscription too. Look at that. N-I-C-K, my first name, 10% off. Casey, we'll talk to you soon.